afternoon, everybody. My name is Amy, and I'm part of the Evergreen team from Camden Sachs Community College. Our mission statement was to advise the developers of the old market house building in Camden on how they could make the building more energy efficient. The Townscape Heritage in Initiative are currently working in Campbell, Paul and Madrid and are funded by the European Convergence Fund. This is one example of the work that THI have done is the vestry in Campbell. That's the before and this is after. The old market house. The old market house is located in the centre of town. The building was rebuilt in 1867 after it encountered, encountered severe storm damage. Inside the building, there were town hall, magistrate rooms, public hall, and assembly rooms. The old market house today. On the left is the front of the old market house. On the right is the side of the old market house. As you may notice, there are a lot of windows in the old market house. There is a lot of glass. Campbell has many historic buildings and is part of World Heritage due to mining. Traditionally, the buildings were built to last, have been standing for many years, and with maintenance, they should be standing for many more. Historic buildings should change and adapt to be useful to people. The old market house is a grade two listed building. However, solutions that apply to modern buildings cannot be applied to older properties which are listed. Okay, so here is a diagram of showing where a typical house loses the heat, but you have obviously have to times this by about three for the size of the art building. Uh, we, we looked at nine options, uh, the ones that were the most viable were the generating electricity or heat, draft proofing, insulation, the types of lighting, the different glazing styles. Now unfortunately we cannot use any of these options as we are working on a grade 2 listed building, the space is limited and the nearest water course is 3 kilometres away. Okay, here are our draft proofing options, so insulating strips, uh, guns, silicone, mastic and brush seals, all of these would be usable. Um, our insulation of roof space and walls. Unfortunately, we cannot use cavity wall insulation as there are no cavities. <laughs> okay, the lighting types, obviously the tungsten filament bulbs are no longer made and were pretty much rubbish. <laughs> so we decided to use LED and compact fluorescent lamps. Uh, for the heating, we looked at uh, efficient thermostatically controlled radiators, temperature and timing controls, and a combined heat and power unit. Uh, we decided that underfloor heating, underfloor insulation, and zone control underfloor heating uh, could all be used. Uh, dry lining is the best way to insulate the walls in this particular building. And we also looked at reducing the internal volume of the rooms, ventilating the rooms, and heat recovery systems. Styles. Here, windows and U values. U values are quantities used by architects for working out thermal energy flow within buildings. In particular, these are used to work out the energy losses through both windows and walls. The U value is the thermal energy flow through a particular through a material. The higher the figure, the higher the heat loss. As you can see from our table, slender glaze is clearly the best with an average U value of 1.3 to 1.9, depending on the thickness of single glazing clearly being the worst. The old market house was originally designed to maximise natural light with approximately 30% of the upper floor levels being glazed. A typical house loses around 10 to 15% through windows and walls, however the building is much larger so therefore the losses will be far greater. These are the first of our glazing options, single glazing and double glazing. Single glazing, we've already seen, is a very poor insulator, but has the advantage of already being installed and it holds the building's original appearance. Double glazing is twice as efficient, but the building is listed, and so changing it to conventional double glazing would involve replacing, uh, would involve replacing or increasing the window frames. Our other two options were slender glaze and secondary glazing. Slender glaze is probably the best option. It's two sheets of glass with a narrow cavity film and an inert gas called krypton. Using slender glaze, however, is very costly. So that option is the best, but by far, but by far the most costly. Secondary glazing is also one that we consider, despite it not being a primary one, for having the advantage of being able to be put over single glazing, and it is also relatively cheap. Okay, so we decided to test three types of glazing. We decided to test double glazing, single glazing, and slender glaze. 
Our test involved putting sealed jars of a fixed volume of water into an insulated polystyrene box with a hole cut in the top covered by the three glazing types. That's a picture of our experiment. Here is one of the experiments. <laughs> Obviously you can see the double glazing in the top left, the slender glaze in the bottom left, and the single glazing in the top. Okay, we decided to use the EasySense data logger over a three hour period for our results. Okay, our results. Uh, this particular snapshot was taken an hour into the experiment. From the results you can clearly see that the best glass at keeping the heat in was the slender glaze, followed closely by the double and then the single glazing. Although the slender glaze was the best, the difference between it and the double glazing isn't very significant, which may have been due to the fact that the experiment was performed inside at an artificial temperature. Findings and recommendations. This picture shows a house that is very energy efficient. It would not be suitable to make the old market house building this energy efficient as it's right in the middle of a busy, busy town. Based on thermal performance, gas filled double glazing, such as slender glaze, achieve low U values, so these should be considered. Based on U-values alone, we should also consider secondary glazing, however the glazing may be too large for the window frames. Based on materials and embodied energy, our research has found that the variations in embodied energy are largely dependent upon the gases used in the cavity and the frame. Replacing the frames of the sash windows would add to the embodied energy. This means that keeping the existing frames or secondary glazing would be a more sustainable option. Based on longevity and maintenance, if the seal in a double glazed window unit fails, the thermal performance will be dramatically reduced. Some glazing is guaranteed for up to 10 years, however some glazing may last longer than this. Based on cost alone, slender glaze is the most expensive option, but it may also, may also make the biggest savings in the long run. Based on energy cost and carbon savings, a conventional house can save around £135 a year by installing double glazing. They can also save around 700 kilograms of CO2 emissions. The old market house has a much bigger area of glass than a conventional house, so savings could be much greater. Conclusions. Our project has demonstrated that energy efficient glazing can be successfully incorporated into listed buildings, improving thermal performance and lowering CO2 emissions without detracting from the historic character or appearance. We recommend that slim profile double glazing such as slender glaze should be fitted into the existing stash window frames. We would like to say thank you to Claire Langdon, Kaya Simmons, Eddie Allison, A. Wadon Sons, Slender Gaze Limited, and Campbell Historical Society. And finally, our teacher, Mr. Lister, for your undivided attention and support. Thank you all for listening. Are there any questions? Did you find any um, problems with the Slender Glaze? Did it, was there anything that you thought was uh, that would detract from the character of the listed building? I uh, know we checked, um, although obviously it's a Grade 2 listed building. The slender glaze fits perfectly within the original size window frames and we saw it as the most viable option for energy saving in the future. Right, okay. And so um, the size was sufficient because it's, it's a very large window, but the, yeah. um, the size of the glass would be compatible. Yeah, yeah, you can make it to size, yeah, make it to fit, yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions? There's a lot of. Did you look at also the amount of heat coming in as well as the heat going out? So with all that glazing, yeah. So you're going to get a lot of sunshine on the south face side coming in. You know how that gas affects the ability to have the place to warm up naturally as well as to cool down. Honestly, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do it on the next one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you.